Welcome to the Building Healthy Organizations podcast. We understand how the human brain works and how that impacts behavior in the workplace. I'm glad you joined us today for our continued journey to understand how to build a healthy organization. You may have noticed the world has changed. Um, And some of us think maybe not for the best, and maybe there is some good out there. Maybe some of these changes are really good. When it comes to the workplace, hybrid teams, remote workers, uh, Zoom teams, Google, all of the virtual connection platforms, these are all major changes to the way we do work. If you think about teams historically, they have been in the same place physically doing work together and operating in an ongoing mode of collaboration, communication, just regular discussions that happen organically. That's not necessarily the case today. The workplace has become pretty much wherever you are if you're allowed to be a remote worker. The complexity to collaborate and to work as a team has increased dramatically. And there's a lot of challenges to teams today. These challenges are pretty much unlimited. Disconnected workplaces, just the the fact that we're not in the same place physically, that's a disconnect. And then there's disruptions, all kinds of disruptions, whether it's working from home and having family or pets or people coming to the front door or whether it's working as you're trying to take care of a loved one who may be sick. And then you have the technological disruptions like the internet goes down or the computer isn't working right. There are so many more disruptions and distractions than we've seen in the past. It's We've increased by an order of magnitude or more how many disruptions and distractions in a remote and hybrid environment. It doesn't mean that we can't be productive. And I think a lot of people would argue they're more productive now than they have been before. That's fine from an individual productivity standpoint, but what happens to the team? Is the team as productive? Is the team as connected? What are some of the other challenges? Well, stress levels, just the the literal stress levels that come from this disconnected remote workplace that we're in. There's lower trust levels. We're seeing that measure across the board. And it's increasing because a lot of owners, senior leaders are starting to require people to come back into the office, physically into the office. And there's a problem with that. Employees are wondering, wait a minute, are you saying you don't trust me now after all this time and everything I've done for you? Remote workers don't have the organic conversations every day in an in-person environment that would help to build trust. That has to be intentional to make those connections. So trust is suffering in a lot of different ways, ways that we didn't expect. But it makes sense if you think about it. There's an obvious lack of connection. And I don't mean just being together or just talking to each other. I'm talking about true, authentic connection. And then there's worker shortages. And those shortages are putting a greater burden on the employees who are already there. And it's creating all kinds of stress. We haven't even talked about the stress on leaders of teams, where they have to figure out how do I best lead a group of remote workers or how do we manage this hybrid team environment? There are so many different variables today to the success equation 
that has to be taken into account. Okay, this list of challenges could go on and on. And here's what happens when you have more and more challenges, when they become uh, greater in their intensity. It drains the three most important resources that any team has, time, energy, and focus. Now, that could be for an individual as well, and it can be for an organization. Time, energy, focus. Those are the things that we as an individual, we as a team, we as an organization can apply every day. And those three things are taking a lot of hit from all of these challenges that are coming at us on a regular basis. These are critical resources for team performance. The more prevalent the challenges, the less these resources will be available to fuel team success. And let me give you a little insight. It's a It's a model that I call the energy exchange. The energy exchange, when you wake up in the morning, you've got 100% of your energy to spend. But here's the thing about energy. As you wake up and become aware of your surroundings, you start to layer in your brain all of that stuff you're dealing with. Family issues, relationship issues, problems at work, Uh, the economy, politics, I mean, you name it. You just start to layer. And what happens is those, those concerns draw energy internally into you first so that you have what you need to deal with that. And it reduces the amount of energy that is available to go to external efforts like work or taking care of other people or building relationships or whatever that happens to be. So this is a big deal. The way that energy is consumed in us and in teams, that energy goes internal first to dealing with whatever you're dealing with internally. And then what's left over can go to the effort. I think that's an important concept to really think about and how does it apply to you? How much of your energy today is available to go to external efforts and how much is being consumed by internal focus, internal uh, concerns? So how do we begin to create an environment where team success can happen? You've got all these challenges. You've got remote workers. You've got hybrid teams. All of this stuff is going on. How do you build an environment of a team that can really operate well and perform well and and be a high-functioning team in the face of all of these challenges? First, we have to understand the context of the team environment. I want you to think first about what are the building blocks of a team environment. Not necessarily the skills or the competencies or the drivers of team performance. We'll get to those. But first, what is the environment of a team made up of? Well, I've created what I call the five C's, the letter C, of teams. For a team to be high-functioning and high-performing, there are several foundational elements or building blocks of a team environment, and it's what I call the five C's. In the very middle, think of a large circle in the middle and four smaller circles around the circle that's in the middle. In the very middle is culture. Every team has its own culture. The culture is the set of values and practices that a team operates by. It's, it's truly at the heart of, of the team environment. And it really is going to be 
predictive of team success. The team culture is the agreed upon rules a team follows. It sets the standard for performance and behavior. Purpose and direction for the team should flow from the culture of the team. So culture is critical. It is the first C in the five C's of team environment. The second C is chemistry. The term chemistry related here to teams can have a a lot of different meanings. For the sake of what we're going to look at today, let's focus on the mix of unique individuals that make up the team. What is their personality? What is their emotional intelligence, skills, and their competencies? What about their experience, their cognitive abilities, their knowledge, their hard skills? Basically, what does each team member bring to the team? When that comes together, it comes together in a certain type of chemistry. And that's an important part of the team environment. The next C in team environment is connection. Connection is a mix of communication, collaboration, chemistry, and care that the team has for each other. So there's some more C words for you. True connection comes from a process of active listening, asking good questions to gain additional insight, and then taking the time to understand the perspectives and the input of other team members. So connection is another critical part of the team environment. The next C is competency. Competency is embedded throughout each team member and then as a collective for the team itself. The measures of competency are varied from hard skills to human skills. Defining competency within a team is really important to understand their strengths, their gap areas, and areas of opportunity. And then the last C in the team environment is coherence. Coherence is related to one of the drivers of success, which is trust. Coherence is a measure of alignment. A high coherence team pulls together and operates at a high level, no matter what the stress or the pressure is. A low coherence team experiences more disconnect, more misalignment, more disruption, and frankly, just chaos. This might as well add another C word. There's chaos. Coherence is really important to the team environment because it will be many times the glue that holds things together or, if it's not very strong, does not. These five foundational building blocks of a team will determine the team capacity and potential for success. All of those must be considered and managed well for a team to attain the ability to function and perform at high levels. What do we do with that knowledge of the team environment? Well, if we can understand how to create an environment through those five C's that is conducive to high levels of team performance, high levels of team functioning, then we can look more detailed at the drivers of team success. So with the understanding of what makes up the team environment, just from a kind of a building block level, we can now focus in on the five drivers of team success. Why are these important? because they are literally going to be your your lead indicators of how well a team is doing. The first one is trust. Building safety and assurance for risk-taking, to innovate, to share, to learn. Motivation. 
clarify meaning and commitment, and a drive toward excellence. Teamwork. Collaborate and communicate well to take on the challenges. Execution. Focus on what's important. Be accountable to generate good results. And change. Adapt and innovate to go into the unknown, to take the risk that are necessary, and to learn from those. Now, these definitions come directly out of the best and most actionable team assessment I've ever seen and ever used, the Team Vital Signs by Six Seconds. I use this with a lot of different teams, and we use it year to year with teams so we can watch the development of the team. And if new members come into a team, we can take it again to see where is the team at now. Do we need to shore up some gaps? Are there new strengths that we can leverage? Just like the five C's of teams that we talked about earlier, there is a very specific model for the five drivers of team success. And trust is at the very middle of that model. So picture four boxes side by side. So they make up a a big square themselves. But right in the middle of those is a diamond that that overlaps each of those four boxes that's, that's trust. So trust, motivation, change, which is really change embracing, being willing to embrace change and look at change as an opportunity, execution, and teamwork. All of those drivers lead to very important outcomes for teams. What are those? Sustainability, agility, results, and satisfaction. When those measures are high, you've got a team that's functioning at a high level. So for a team to be high performing, each of these drivers must be present at levels that support and enhance your team's success. When we look at the five C's of teams, I mentioned values and practices that make up the team environment, especially the team culture. Each of these drivers of team success, trust, motivation, change, execution, and teamwork, can be thought of as practices that bring value to the team and better manage the three critical resources a team has, time, energy, and focus. Instead of focusing on the challenges, Focus on what you can directly impact. The five C's of teams and the five drivers of team success. If you want more on those, feel free to check out our website at eqfit.org. You'll find many more resources there for you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Building Healthy Organizations by EQFIT. We do understand how the human brain works and how that impacts behavior and performance in the workplace. We also love hearing your suggestions and ideas. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover, please send us an email at info at gscfit.com. For more information and inspiration, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and of course our website, eqfit.org.